Silicon Valley Bank, one of the largest banks in the United States, went entirely defunct in just 48 hours. So how did the 16th biggest bank in the US lose everything so quickly? Well, SVB Bank is the warning sign that we are now in an impending recession. Just like Lehman Brothers' collapse, SVB is going to be the catalyst for a worldwide recession. So what led to the unprecedented collapse of one of the United States' largest banks in just a matter of days? Well, you see, after seeing massive growth through the initial phase of the pandemic, SVB began tumbling during the start of 2022, until it hit zero the very next year. Now, it's not uncommon these days to hear talks of imminent financial collapse, but it's another thing entirely to see it happen to a massive investment bank like this. And now the bank's implosion has obviously not gone unnoticed by their customers, as over 1,500 tech companies could be facing huge financial problems because of SVB's downfall. Additionally, around $20 billion in funds have been entirely wiped from banks in Canada after a continent-wide sell-off of SVB's stocks. So then the real question here is where did this massive sell-off of SVB stock come from? Well, over nearly four decades of business, SVB had found their niche acting as a middleman between venture capitalist companies and the startups they invested in. You see, when a startup found itself with millions or billions in investments, they would always put it into Silicon Valley Bank. And over the course of 2020 and 2021, the markets for tech companies and startups were booming, attracting massive investments in new companies and projects. Silicon Valley Bank quickly saw their assets skyrocket from just under $70 billion to nearly $210 billion. So in the span of just two years, they got three times richer. But with so many deposits being made, the bank had an entirely new problem. You see, they were quickly running out of loans to give, which was how they usually made their money. And without new loans to keep up with their new billions, they had to turn to another way to use their new money. So they started putting their money into security financial products designed to be sold often years or decades after purchase, and doing so would net SVB a guaranteed profit as long as they didn't sell them too quickly, and if they did, they would have to sell them at market value. And the executives at SVB bet hard on these securities, putting a reported $70 billion into them. But at the time, no one really cared, and everything was looking great going into 2022. The bank was the richest it had ever been. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, as SVB and their executives were about to find out, they were in the middle of a massive, massive bubble. So as the economy started to falter after the post-pandemic revival, in addition to inflation, and the Federal Reserve decided to raise interest rates. And after leaving them at effectively zero for the whole of 2021, they had decided to start raising them. And this had two major effects for SVB. First, and most importantly, it made their $70 billion of investments worth much less almost overnight. And as their values fell, SVB was left incredibly overexposed. A third of their assets had just $15 billion of their value, so selling them would be absolutely disastrous. Furthermore, these interest rates were extremely bad for tech startups, and this was SVB's main clients, who had given them their billions in the first place. And since it's harder to get companies off the ground with higher rates, startups began depositing less and less money into their bank as their investments dried up, whilst also withdrawing money that was held in the bank to already cover their own costs. And then over the course of a year, the interest rate jumped to nearly 5%, completely crippling the tech industry. And it became very clear that these companies were all grossly overvalued, as I've mentioned in a previous video on big tech's collapse. And so with big tech collapsing, this led to massive layoffs at Silicon Valley, as we saw just a few months ago. And so when big tech collapsed, so did SVB. It had been an awful year for SVB, and then things started to look incredibly precarious after they announced that they would be selling a massive amount of their securities at a loss. And so almost immediately afterwards, SVB stated that they would further liquidate around $2 billion to keep their balance sheet from falling apart. Once clients heard this news, it didn't instill much faith in their integrity of the bank. Many of the key firms working with SVB advised companies to withdraw their money from the institution, and recommendations such as this are about as bad as it can get from a bank. These type of suggestions will almost certainly lead to bank runs, which, unfortunately for SVB, immediately happened after the news of their financial decisions and subsequent losses went public. Now, for those who don't know, bank runs occur when a large number of customers believe a bank will fail and deposited money starts being withdrawn in droves. So with SVB's recent report on selling securities at a loss and their attempts to liquidate company stock, it's really not hard to see why the majority lost faith in the institution and started to cash out. Customers began withdrawing their money from SVB so fast that the bank became insolvent in just a matter of hours. In fact, the police were even called to stop customers withdrawing their money. However, given SVB's financial state and investment decisions, there was absolutely no chance the bank could pay their debts they owed. And so in total, an estimated $42 billion was withdrawn from SVB's reserves just before the bank went defunct. And so then just in a few days, SVB had a negative cash balance of almost a billion dollars. And like most banks, SVB keeps only a small portion of deposits on hand while investing the rest of their funds into whatever they see fit. However, SVB had 
had even less collateral after putting 91 billion into these awful securities, leaving them incredibly vulnerable. What's even more unfortunate is that an event like this could have been avoided if their investments were diversified into other stocks. It's hard to understand how they could have made such a risky, stupid decision. Usually there's a whole department dedicated to managing risk, specifically so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. And there was one of these departments at SVB, but nobody was actually running it. It was left without anyone in charge for the nine months before the collapse. And it gets worse when you learn that the CEO of SVB, Greg Becker, was actually on the board of the committee that was meant to manage his bank. This kind of self-policing corruption is all too common in the financial industry. So it's not a coincidence that Greg Becker and many other executives at SVB sold millions in shares just before the collapse. However, SVB was investing strictly into the safe US Treasury bonds, something that led to their undoing. So during this bank run, SVB was sitting on a mountain of losses while people were demanding their cash back in droves. And this was not a circumstance that SVB could handle, and so the bank ended up being taken over by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. But with how suddenly everything happened, and the state of SVB to winning investments, the institution was doomed since the second bank run started. And it's not like the higher ups at SVB didn't see this imminent collapse coming either. In fact, executives at the company managed to sell a large portion of their shares just before the bank fell under. And so, when a classic banker move, those at the top who had caused this chaos and who obviously knew it was about to happen made sure that they would sit comfortably at the top. However, unfortunately for the startup founders and clients on the lower end of the totem pole, they didn't get any advance notice from SVB. In fact, a branch in New York even called the police on people who were lining up to try and get their hard-earned money back. And so with all of the massive figures and numbers, it's hard to see this as anything but a problem for the 1%. However, this collapse is already ruining the lives of normal everyday people like Lindsay. But before we continue, I want to tell you about the video sponsor Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter delivered Monday to Sunday, getting you up to speed on business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. You see, before I subscribed to Morning Brew, I would start my mornings aimlessly scrolling through my phone, just watching mind-numbing content. But now with Morning Brew, I get a summary of relevant stories that are really informative. For example, when researching for this video, I learned that despite having about 17% of the world's population, Africa accounts for just 1% of new car sales globally, and South Africa for 85% of those. Because securing financing at favorable loan terms is a major hurdle and so in many African countries, customers may pay the full cost of the car up front, which is a huge symptom of the corruption and economic chaos that prevails in many of the African nations and it's clear when going over to Morning Brew that they're witty, relevant and informative. A much better alternative to the dry, dense and boring traditional news that so many of us are used to, which is why there's absolutely no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew if you're interested in business, finance or tech. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe, so sign up for free by visiting morningbrewdaily.com forward slash moon or by clicking the link in the description below. Now, Lindsay founded her own business after struggling to support her new family. Years of hard work went into building her business until it was finally starting to lift off. But then 2022 happened and the tech markets crashed. Her promising new business still attracted investors, but she made the mistake of putting her money into SVB. And so when the news broke about the problems at SVB, she made the wise decision to move her money out. Although by now, it was too late. Despite the fact that the bank hadn't actually gone under yet, her transfers didn't go through and now she stands to lose her whole business because of SVB's collapse, sucking away all of her hard earned money overnight, completely crushing her family and future. And situations like this are happening to thousands of people. People who are lining up in the pouring rain just to get back their own money from an institution which has squandered it all. We haven't seen anything like this since 2008. And this is when people started to realize the true scale of this collapse. As this sudden collapse obviously didn't bode too well for the folks on Wall Street either, as it caused many of their shares to plummet. In fact, SVB's collapse particularly hit the liberal elites hard, as many of these people had placed their money into Silicon Valley after believing in the bubble of the last few years. People like ex-royal couple Harry and Meghan were reported to lose millions that they had in the bank. Oprah Winfrey is set to lose $590 million, and SVB's collapse will be a huge hit to any of their woke investors. However, officials now saying that there's nothing to worry about regarding the larger financial system. The Deputy Treasury Secretary of the US stated that they're quote, paying attention to this particular institution and are quote, confident about the resilience of the financial system. Despite this apparent confidence, the Secretary declined to predict the impact SVB's collapse will have on the broader economy or the tech industry. And when you look at the cause of the collapse, where a ton of dangerous securities lost their value, and it all starts to seem a little bit too familiar. SVB may have thought they were being more cautious by buying more US Treasury bonds compared to other banks, but this is what caused their downfall. By betting on the interest rate staying low, and with so much money on this bet, they sealed their fate. For reference, SVB was holding around $209 billion in assets at the end of the last year, 
together, most of those being in US Treasury bonds. This means that a collapse of this scale hasn't really happened since 2008, when the Washington Mutual Bank went under, making SVB's downfall the second largest financial institution failure in US history. But it's ridiculous to say that this has anything to do with what happened in 2008. It's a different bank run by entirely different people, right? Well, not exactly. The same people who ran the economy into the ground betting on dangerous securities might have done the same thing again. That's right, Joseph Gentile, one of the executives at SVB, used to also be an executive for Lehman Brothers. As their chief financial officer, he oversaw the most disastrous banking collapse in history. And now he's done it again in nearly exactly the same way. And then the final nail in the coffin came when SVB CEO announced that they would be selling ownership of the company to raise $2.25 billion after taking losses of over $1.5 billion in failed bond positions. Once word of this got out the day after the announcement, it caused the company's stock to dump over 60% when the insolvency issues went public. Then on March 10th, the CEO announced that they had failed to raise enough capital for recovery. In a desperate move, they were looking for another company to take over SVB. However, by this time, it was too late, and the government stepped in and seized the bank. Even worse for SVB, almost 100% of their business accounts are not covered by the FDIC's insurance. FDIC insurance only covers up to $250,000, a number that is far too small for the 97 7.3% of SVB accounts, which are worth a lot more than this, meaning the majority of companies being held by SVB are now unable to access their money, since it's not covered by insurance. So these subordinate companies may go under simply because they cannot access their own money. And now who's to blame for this? Well, the blame rests squarely on SVB's shoulders. The bank made incredibly poor decisions to bet entirely on the Federal Reserve's interest rate not to be raised, rather than diversifying their investments like the majority of other banking institutions. Because of this, their assets cannot be properly liquid dated in time for clients to get their funding withdrawn, meaning many of the held companies are now going to have to wait a very long time to get their money back. And we're talking about companies like Etsy, Circle, Roblox and BlockFi, which had hundreds of millions in SVB, which they might never see again. Regulators have had to step in to shut down the bank and to oversee what's left of the bank's assets. Employees at the bank have been offered 1.5 times their salary for the next 45 days if they stay on to manage the funeral proceedings, and it's unclear how much they'll be able to save considering how desperate the situation truly is. So then you might be thinking, is the collapse of SVB going to be a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis? Well, we've already seen that it's having worldwide consequences. For example, SVB's British arm founded thousands of UK startups and companies, which are now all facing imminent danger, which is why the UK authorities are taking emergency meetings with tech firms to look at a possible bailout of the sector. HSBC has now agreed that it's going to buy out the UK subsidiaries of SVB for just one pound, taking on their debts and liabilities, but also giving them an opportunity to profit. This isn't just a business move though. It clearly indicates a worry on the part of financial institutions that this collapse could spread like a disease into the whole economic system. At the moment though, it's still up for debate. Some believe this is a sign of things to come, whilst others are calling it an idiosyncratic situation. But when considering a rerun of 2008, the most relevant factor to look at is what the other banks are investing in. And if those banks have been following in the first steps of SVB by investing the majority of their deposits into US treasuries, things may take a very big turn for the worse. However, this could be a one-off, and SVB may be alone in their investment failures. Despite some saying otherwise, it's not hard to see trends pointing towards another financial crash similar to 2008. I mean, just looking at the data, it's entirely possible that SVB could be the first of many banks to fail. Similar banks that have ties to industries like tech are starting to become cash-strapped, and the collapse of SVB could lead to disastrous consequences for those institutions. And if you start looking at it this way, the dominoes seem to be falling, as many experts like Peter Schiff are arguing. However, others disagree with people like Peter Schiff. As one of the major reasons the 2008 financial crash was so disastrous was because of risky investments in the housing market, which is very contrary to SVB's massive amount of investment in US Treasury assets. However, it is easy to see parallels. The Biden administration has even mentioned that measures put in place after the 2008 disaster would prevent a similar incident from occurring. Yet remarks like this bring up the question, since housing loans were the main cause of the financial crash in 2008, could a similar incident happen in the near future? Maybe with BlackRock spending a large portion of their investments in homeownership, could they be the next one on the chopping block, or another case, could these US Treasury assets go completely bunk, causing a complete collapse for whoever is invested in them? I mean, if more banks have put their money into the same securities that SUV did, then the whole banking system might be about to go nuclear. Especially considering that multiple sources are now confirming that governments won't be bailing out SVB at this time. They have agreed to return customers' money at no expense to the taxpayer, but it's not a full bailout. Biden has also gone on record saying that investors in the bank will not be protected. In any case, the failure of SVB will have greater consequences. And the rot has already started spreading. Signature Bank was the next to go. New York regulators closed it just days after SVB closed. Details are still hazy, but it's likely a 
very similar situation to SVB, and these two aren't likely to be the last. Stock trading has ceased on lots of other banks in anticipation of the chaos, like First Republic Bank and Western Alliance Bank Corp. However, it hasn't stopped their shares from drastically losing value. First Republic fell by over 60%, PacWest by nearly 40%, and Western Alliance by 68%. This means there's lots of uncertainty about their future, and people are scrambling to sell their investments at a significant loss just to get something back. Default swaps for Credit Suisse have also skyrocketed in value, indicating lots of people are willing to bet that the next to go, which is understandable considering how shaky they've been recently. And their downfall would also represent the beginning of a true collapse of the banking system. With the hardships of 2008 and the recent years fresh in everyone's minds, it's unlikely that people will be able to stand another taxpayer-funded bailout. But the alternative of economic chaos isn't really much better, so all we can hope is that the bankers haven't been so greedy and incompetent that they created another financial crisis. But by going by recent history, that could be a long shot.